Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, as you can tell by the title of this video, thumbnail, and obviously what you're seeing right now, um, Game of Thrones at it again. Uh, it's it's uh, it's interesting. So uh, yeah, so let's just get into this. Uh, if you guys didn't see the first video, I did reply to his video, which is it's kind of a weird situation because this video. That he, I'm gonna be kind of responding to is his response to his first video or whatever on the subject, which you guys will see he'll talk about. But uh, yeah, let's just get right into the shit show, I guess. Hey, hi, how you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. This video is a follow-up to my previous Overwatch video, Don't Let Overwatch Get Away With Bullshit. So if you haven't watched that video, you'll most likely be lost with this one. Needless to say, I recommend you watch that video before watching this one. But preamble aside, on my previous Overwatch video, I got a lot of replies. A lot of comments. I mean, a lot. And reactions were surprisingly all over the place, all over the spectrum. I'm pretty sure I got every archetype of YouTube comment in my comment section for that Overwatch video. Now obviously not everyone liked the video. Not everyone agreed with the video, and that's perfectly fine. It's a video game. <sighs> I'm not losing sleep over it. However, there were some genuinely good criticisms, rebuttals, and questions asked in the comment section, as well as a fair deal of toxicity and blatant stupidity. But, but Which is gonna be what he's mainly focusing on. He's gonna bring up like one comment that's a longer comment or whatever, and then he'll agree with a couple of the points, which you guys will see, and then he'll just dismiss everything else because he can't be wrong, I guess. Um, you guys will see what I'm talking about, but it's, it's ridiculous. Before we get to the funny stuff, I genuinely want to address the well-thought-out comments in response to my video and what I was saying in it. So By well-thought-out comments, he means well-thought-out comment. Because he only responds to one positive one and it takes up like half the video, so I might kind of cut through it for time's sake. One of the best examples and more specific comments critiquing my video comes from a comment. Quadriplegic must be frustrating for you, someone who likes to get things done. Examples and more. Well, that's frustrating. I didn't get an ad when watching the video before, so I don't know why I did there. Uh, Specific comments critiquing my video comes from a comment posted by Sam Arendt. Apologies if I'm butchering your name. Sam. Ra Sam Arendt. I mean, I had a. Uh, I had a, um, what's it called, a, uh, art teacher named Mr. Arndt, and, uh, his name was spelled just like that, but I mean... Right, <sighs> gets a fully finished game with a large hero roster, multiple maps and modes for 45 bucks, while other games launched unfinished and ask full price. Well, Sam, when it comes to the term and semantics of a fully finished game, that's both debatable and subjective. When it comes specific... Um... How do you debate a game being finished? That that just I don't What? <laughs> I I don't I don't see I mean he's gonna go on because I did um for I guess transparency's sake, I don't I didn't get Overwatch at launch. I got it um during this past during 2017's um Halloween event. I got it like a couple weeks or a month before that, so I didn't have the game at launch or anything like that, but he goes on to kind of talk about the fact that um, it only had quick play, it didn't have like arcade or competitive, which that's, yeah, that sh stuff should have been in there at launch, but still with the fact of what they had, yeah, it might not have been 100%, uh, because I don't know um, if they promised competitive at launch or if they did any of that, or if they promised, oh yeah, well, or if, even if they announced those modes or whatever beforehand, like before launch or anything like that so i mean i can't fully speak as much on this but just on the whole thought process that finished is a subjective term is just wrong i mean it's just one of those things where if something's finished it's finished i mean if a game is finished it has all the features that were either promised or teased or whatever or it has all of the features that i guess we're talking about which is the same thing i guess but i mean Compare Overwatch to Call of Duty World War II. I know Overwatch came out two years ago or whatever, but 
cut World War II. At launch, the headquarters wasn't working. At launch, there were no extra like party modes or anything like that. There wasn't um, what was it? There wasn't the esports mode. There wasn't competitive. There wasn't um, like the UMG type stuff. There wasn't any of that. Um, there wasn't paint jobs. There wasn't um, fucking the emblem crater was fucked, so you couldn't even see other people's ones or download them. You still can't do that from a paint shop. Um, I mean, there's a lot, and the game was unbalanced as hell. I mean, compare that to the starting state of Overwatch, and it's it's just not even something you can compare. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, again, I'm not trying to bring out the whole fact of, oh, well, COD, but I mean, I'm not even, like I said, I'm not going to defend Overwatch at the very beginning because I didn't have the game, so I wouldn't 100% know how it fully played. But from what I've heard from friends of mine and stuff like that and other sources that I trust and have a pretty good reputation, comparing the two is kind of just drastically different. But, yeah. Basically, to Overwatch, I would argue that the game was unfinished at launch. The game feels far more finished and complete now, for sure, but keep in mind, back in May of 2016 when the game launched, Overwatch launched without competitive mode, without arcade mode, and without the more in-depth custom games options. Yes, the game has all that now, and far more characters and maps and cosmetics, but if we're talking about getting a finished or unfinished game at launch, I would argue Overwatch was indeed unfinished. Especially when you compare it to the other video games that launched that same month. Battleborn and Doom. Also, specifically when it comes to Overwatch, the game has been out for almost two years and they still haven't added the full roster of heroes playable as AI bots. So when it comes to some tiny aspects, it can be argued that Overwatch is still unfinished. Moving on to the 445 bucks part of the comment, this is actually something that was repeatedly brought up in the comments section over and over again by several different individuals stating that the game is not full price, that Overwatch is not a full price AAA game that's only $40. That's not true. Yes, the game is only $40, $45 on PC, but Overwatch fanboys seem to be completely ignoring the fact that you still need to buy Overwatch to this day right now for the full price of $60 on consoles. On Alright, um, this is something I'm gonna slightly contest, but also slightly agree with. It's like a 50-50, because while, yes, 99% of the time, it is sixty dollars, but ever since I've gotten the game, I got it on sale and it was like thirty bucks or something like that, or yeah, it was like thirty bucks when I got the game. So I got it for half price, less than the PC version, and I got all the stuff for the sixty dollar edition. Um, and since then, I think they've had like two or three deals like that where they have like about half off. Or something like that for people without PS Plus on PlayStation at least, and then people with PS Plus get it for cheaper or whatever. I don't know about the whole Xbox end of it because I don't have an Xbox. I don't talk to anyone that has an Xbox because I don't know anyone that does. So, um, but yeah, as ter in terms of that, and I'm assuming I mean, with the fact that you show on the PlayStation Store, it's the reason I'm talking about that. I mean, you can get it for cheaper on PC if you really want to wait that long. For the price, and yeah, that's another negative that it might be. Oh well, it should just be. It sh we shouldn't have to wait for a deal. But I mean, I'd rather pay thirty dollars for the whole game, like the game of the year edition or whatever, than forty bucks for not the whole game. I mean, that just. I mean, it sounds like a better deal to me. I mean, you're getting more shit for ten dollars less. But yeah, that's again just kind of nuances and stuff like that. But let's just get back to the video. On Xbox One, on PlayStation 4. So yeah, two out of the three platforms that Overwatch is available for are still the full price of $60. Activision Blizzard, almost two years later, is still asking for the full AAA $60 price tag on their multiplayer-only game with no single-player campaign and barely any PvE. And what PvE they do have, they rip out the game after a limited time period and have you wait a year to play it again for a limited time period. So again, while Overwatch is available for 40 to 45 bucks on PC, 
for consoles for Xbox One and PlayStation 4, it's still $60. Overwatch is a full-priced AAA game, so I am criticizing and looking at it as one. And now looking at the last bit at the first part of Sam's comment, while other games launched unfinished and ask full price. Well, we've already established that a game launching finished or unfinished is subjective and no, we haven't established that. You've established that for your own sake of an argument. A, a finished game is having all the features it promised, all the features that were said would be in the game, and just basic functions of a game in a similar category. I mean, Overwatch compared to other hero shooters, which at the time there was, what, Battleborn coming out or something like that? I mean... Yeah, Battleborn might have been finished, and that's a good thing. But it wasn't. that doesn't make it a good game. Something being finished doesn't make it good. A finished game doesn't always equal quality. That's the thing. And, I mean, yeah. Uh, again, like I said, I don't really know the whole situation of at launch because I didn't really know much about the game back then. I didn't really follow the hype for it or anything like that, so I don't know what was promised or said, but, I mean... This is one of the few people I'm hearing complain about the beginning of it, and so, I mean, I'm not trying to say that there's no value in his argument, because, again, I wouldn't know, personally, but, I mean, if he's one of the very few people saying that there were issues at launch, then, I mean, kind of makes you wonder, but, uh, yeah, let's just go back and note. And debatable, different context and details depending on the particular game, and we already established that Overwatch is indeed still asking for full price. Two out of the three platforms it's available on are still asking for full price. But Sam, a little personal critique, my man. You need to provide examples. Because from where I'm standing, looking at and reading your comment, it looks like you're making a straw man. I know that you're not, but it could be interpreted as you making a straw man. Moving on to the next part. Okay, point one. Or I guess a point of this kind of me interrupting. Um, the, giving examples. You've given Doom as an example, which is a single-player game that has pretty terribly tacked on multiplayer from what 99% of people have told me. Um, so, I mean, hero shooter, single-player game. There's really no kind of crossover there except both have guns. Um... Again, comparing apples to oranges. Um, Battleborn, yeah, that's a bit more of a comparison, but you don't go into examples of why Battleborn. You just say, oh, Battleborn, and then you just expect people to say, oh, well, well uh, hold on. Oh, Jesus Christ, sorry, my fucking dog is having a heart attack. Um, but yeah. You just expect people to say, "Oh, well, he said the word about he said the game Battleborn, so therefore, he imme we immediately know what he's talking about." Give examples. Don't just say, "Oh, well, I named the game, so you guys do the rest and figure it out." That's not that's ridiculously stupid. Also, this is going to be a really hypocritical point, which really doesn't have much on the argument. But man, does this man's mic fucking sound terrible? The constant booming and stuff like that is fucking frustrating. Um. But yeah, again, I know my mic's shit, I'm working on getting a better one, and this is gonna, I'll do a whole kind of bit at the end of this, or a video before this. But yeah, this video I wasn't planning on making or whatever, but then I saw the video and I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll make a video before I go on break. Part of his comment gets multiple new heroes maps and modes per year charge free while other games ask you to pay for map weapon and character packs that's true not much i can add to that outside of overwatch is not the only game that provides free content updates also once again sam i rec um he again you're telling someone else to give examples which he'll say as soon as i'm done saying my stuff but you're not giving examples either you're just saying, oh yeah, well other games do it too. And you're trying to say that as a point against Overwatch. I mean, you're, someone's literally saying, oh yeah, well they give out free content. And you're still finding a reason to say that it's not 100% positive. But whatever.
recommend that you provide examples for what games you're referring to in terms of what games are asking you to pay for packs. But besides those tiny insertions of mine, with this point, you're totally right. Overwatch does give you new playable characters, new maps, and modes for free. And that's great! That's awesome! Just wish Blizzard would let us keep the fleshed out PvE game modes in the game. I mean, they let us keep the new heroes, they let us keep the new maps, they let us keep most of the new modes, but the PvE specific modes, they remove after a limited time. I don't like that. I don't agree with that. I mean, Blizzard and Overwatch have already accumulated so much goodwill with the free updates, with the free characters, maps, and modes. Wouldn't they just get even more good publicity by just leaving Uprising Retribution? Hell, I'll even throw in Junkenstein's Revenge in there. Just. Well, yes, I agree. They'd probably get more free, or not more free credit, more kind of credibility and stuff like that just by leaving the modes in there. It wouldn't make sense to do so. I mean. Just not even just from a business standpoint, but from the fact that sorry, my brother just got home from school. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's it's one of those things where the kind of gameplay of the modes would be nice to have or whatever, but the actual modes like Jimenstein's Revenge, year in year out, wouldn't really fit. Um, I mean, I just, I mean, you'll be sitting there seeing the Halloween skins on the enemies and being like, oh, well, I want to get those, but you can't unless it's the Halloween event. I mean, but again, that's just kind of a nitpick leaving these pve game modes in the game wouldn't that make a sweet deal even sweeter i'm just saying moving on to the next point has cosmetic only loot boxes that can be earned at a very quick rate no I gotta stop you there, gotta stop right there, can't even finish that point. Sam, I apologize, but no, I'm sorry, that is not true. You- I mean, there is ways for it to be true, I mean... How yeah, will actually... Hold on. Yeah, I mean, I'll even do a quick uh, YouTube search to kind of show you guys. Overwatch. Boxes. I should probably do Overwatch Easy Loot Boxes. 257,000 results for fast loot boxes and easy loot boxes. Yeah, some of those are scams. But say 50,000 of those are scams. That's 200,000 legit results and people and he sits here in the same video saying oh well, yeah just a simple you know google search i mean you do not earn loot boxes at a very quick rate in over i mean yes you can as long as you play well and stuff like that play competitive arcade i mean you get three guaranteed loot boxes every week i mean i don't see how that's a bad thing you get XP, even if you're just grouped up with one person, you get 20% extra. Um, I mean, playing consecutive matches, like quick play or arcade, I mean, it's really not that hard. I mean... Overwatch. If we're specifically referring to gaining loot boxes by leveling up, well, when you first buy the game, when you're a noob, your first 20 or so loot boxes you're going to earn rather quickly. But once you surpass that level 20 to level 22 mark, it can take one to two hours, depending on how well you're doing in a match, how much XP you're gaining in a match, to unlock a new loot box. To get only a single, one new loot box. And as it is with Overwatch's loot box being RNG gambling, there's a high probability you're going to get something that's crap in the loot box, or you're going to get something that's nowhere near what you wanted. So again, I'm sorry, Sam, but that is not true. You do not earn loot boxes at a very quick Saying that you don't get things you want in the loot box, and that means you don't get loot boxes quick, that has no correlation. It's like, oh yeah, I got a legendary skin. That doesn't make you earn things faster. That doesn't make you earn loot boxes any quicker. I mean, I, I just don't see how why he brought that up in that situation. Like, it... it doesn't have any correlation or whatever. Great, that's simply not true. That's not the case with Overwatch. Anyways, continuing on with your point, and include an in-game currency to buy items straight away. Wait a second. Sam, you know you only earn in-game currency 
from the loot boxes. You don't gain in-game currency by just playing the game, by just playing and beating matches. The in and I agree. Um, he's saying that as a uh, negative. And I agree. It's a bit frustrating that you can only earn credits through the loot boxes. I mean, I wish there was some way through, like, say, the arcade, or even if they had challenges like other shooters do, where, oh, get this amount of kills with this character, or like daily or weekly challenges, so you can get uh, credits, or even work towards a legendary skin or something like that from hitting certain levels. That would be fantastic. Like, from hitting a level 100 or whatever, that first time you do it, they should give you like a thousand credits or something like that just to kind of be like oh hey well every hundred you'll get a thousand credits just as some kind of reason to grind through the levels except for loot boxes so i will agree with him on that point in-game currency is specifically tied to the loot boxes and the loot boxes are rng gambling and there's no guarantee that you're going to get any in-game currency at all or at any quick or convenient rate to actually unlock what you want the positive point you were trying to make about Overwatch having an in-game currency is nullified by the fact that the in-game currency is solely tied to the RNG loot boxes. Anyways, to finish up this point, while other games have pay-to-win mechanics or ridiculous grinds... Okay, Sam, once again, it sounds and looks like you're building a straw man here. You provide no examples as to what games you're referring to that have pay-to-win mechanics. If you're referring to Star Wars Battlefront 2, well, they don't exist anymore. And the only video games I can find that have pay-to-win mechanics are Call of duty with its supply drops, EA sports games with their card packs, and a lot of crappy mobile games. Um, kind of convenient you left out Destiny 2 there. Um, I mean, you even have it in your intro card, so I'm assuming you're a pretty big fan of the game. I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, personally for me, I wouldn't include a game I don't like as part of my intro card. I mean, I don't even have an intro card, but I mean... It's just, if you don't like a game, why have it in your intro card? But aside from that fact, I mean, you should, I mean, sorry, my sister. Sorry, I'm trying to work. Sorry, my sister was throwing a temper tantrum. She's three, so. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, I mean, it's just, I mean, Star Wars, or not Star Wars, because you already mentioned that. Destiny 2. I mean, Destiny as a franchise is just, I mean, Destiny 2 is awful in terms of the whole pay-to-win aspect. I mean, you could literally pay to get exotics. I mean... How, how is that not pay to win? You're literally paying for better guns. That is literally the definition of pay to win. You're paying for an advantage and you're sitting here not even touching Destiny 2. Whether you forgot about it, which I doubt you would. I mean, you had to have brought up Destiny 2 in the actual, you know, intro card. I mean, you know that it's your intro card, so I mean, you should kind of have an idea, but... Yeah, it's just, it's fucking bonkers. The vast majority of video games, whether they be indie, middle market, or AAA, don't have pay-to-win mechanics. Also, Sam, come on, man, let's be honest here. You and I both know Overwatch is a ridiculous grind. If you want to unlock everything in the game, if you want to unlock all the items and cosmetics in Overwatch without spending money on microtransactions, you're going to be playing this game for thousands and thousands of hours. So... Um, I don't know about the thousands and thousands part. Um, I mean, I've put in maybe, let's say, about 30, 40 hours in Overwatch so far, and I have most of the skins that I could have gotten since I got the game. I have most of the skins, most of the sprays, most of the emotes, highlight intros, voice lines, stuff like that, and I don't really play the game as much as I used to, so I mean, it's really not that hard. Oh, come on, Sam. Come on, man. Let's both be honest here. Overwatch is a ridiculous grind. 
don't imply that Overwatch isn't a ridiculous grind. It is absolutely a ridiculous grind. Sam, your first two points were fair, well-constructed, reasonable, and agreeable for the most part. But your third point, this point right here that we just went over about the loot boxes, in-game currency, pay-to-win mechanics, ridiculous grind. I'm sorry, man. Your third point is wrong on every level. And Again, no, it's not. Literally a simple Google search, or a simple YouTube search, and you'll see over 200,000 results of plenty of ways to earn loot boxes faster. I mean, I'll even give you just a quick fucking rundown. Grouping up, doing consistent matches, do, getting your first win of the day, going through the arcade, also doing all that stuff. I mean, it's really not that hard. I mean, I could play as long as I'm in a two-stack at least, just mean one other person. I'll be getting 20% match bonus each match, guaranteed. And for my first win of each day, I'll get 1,500 XP, which is a good chunk of XP for most levels, even after level 100, which is where I'm at. I mean, there's that. There's the whole thing of, oh, performing better, playing competitive gets you a fuck ton of XP because the longer the matches are, the more you get. Yeah, the longer matches or whatever, it's going to obviously take more time inherently or whatever, so that might seem like more of a grind, but it's playing the game, so you don't really feel like it's as long. I mean, it's just simple stuff that all you had to do was a Google search, or if you played the game enough, you would know this stuff. But you're someone that just wants to play the PvE, and you don't like playing the PvP because of whatever your reason is. Yeah, you can have your preferences, that's fine. But saying it's the game's fault or whatever for the leveling, the leveling, even in the PvE, is pretty decent. When the events are live, and yeah, the PvE should just be in the game in general in some form. I agree with that. I said that in my last video in responding to this guy, but I mean, shit. It's it's just one of those things where he's sitting here complaining about, oh well, you can't get loot boxes. You have to play for thousands of hours, and you really don't. I haven't even hit the 50 hour mark yet. I'm pretty sure, and I have probably about 80 percent of the skins, not 80 percent of the skins, 80 percent of everything in the game. Except for like certain event stuff, so I mean, it's it's really not as hard as this guy's making it seem like. And now finally, his last pro point for Overwatch: get seasonal events for spring, summer, Halloween, winter holidays, and Chinese New Year's again for free, while other games ask you to buy DLC for every edition or only have meager live events. Now, admittedly, the seasonal events in Overwatch are nice. I like them, and as a businessman, I understand them. They're a great business move. They help reinvigorate gamer and player interest in Overwatch, and they absolutely do help the game feel fresh. But here's the thing about that little remark about while other games ask you to buy DLC for every edition. The thing about buying DLC, buying new additions to a game, is that you own it. You own it permanently, and it's not going anywhere. It is yours. It is yours to be played with and enjoyed at your convenience when you want, whenever you want. While having these free limited time events are nice, of course, they're free, you're not paying anything and you get some new content, the fact that that content is only temporary for a limited time within a specific time frame, well, needless to say, that's inconvenient for the player, that's inconvenient for the consumer. Instead of us just being able to own these unique game modes that come with the seasonal events, play them when we want, for how long we want, at our convenience, Blizzard Blizzard instead dictates to its player base how and when their players, their consumers, will be able to enjoy and play their game how they want. And keep in mind, I'm not just specifically picking on Activision Blizzard for this. I don't like this, I don't agree when any game does this. From my point of view, my personal preference, I would much rather a video game either let me buy and own new additional content, or just add the content in there for free, and leave it in there. So I just want to provide that perspective, that point of view when it comes to while other games ask you to buy DLC for every edition. That's not inherently a negative. It really depends on the game, depends on the context, depends on how it is implemented and handled. And Sam, once again, for the last time, my man, you gotta provide examples. While other games only have meager live events? Well, Sam, define meager. What is a meager live event to you? And are you speaking objectively or subjectively? I can't tell because there's no games that you give examples of to base off of. However, don't misunderstand me, I do understand your point here. Yes, Overwatch gets seasonal events, they're free, and they're pretty well made. 
Absolutely. But outside of the cosmetics that you're lucky enough to unlock before the event ends, you don't really get to own the content that comes with that new event. And Sam finishes his comment with, Complaints, it's anti-consumer. And I still stand by that, Sam. Sorry. While Overwatch is a good video game, I like the game. It's fun to play, absolutely. And I do still recommend the game to people who love multiplayer video games and hero characters. But Overwatch does. It absolutely does have parts of it that are anti-consumer. As long as the game has RNG loot box gambling that you can spend real money on... Okay, um... I think I kind of touched on this a couple times before in my other videos, but... <sighs> Loot boxes are not inherently evil. Loot boxes aren't inherently anti-consumer. Yeah, it's not the best way to go about things, but I mean, from I mean, you gotta also think of it this way. As as bad as it sounds, these companies, Blizzard, Activision, all that kind of stuff, they're companies. They have to do things to make money. They can't just sit here and say, yeah. I mean, yeah, it would be great. If you could just, you know, earn the skins or whatever for hitting certain levels or earn credits instead of loot boxes, that would be great. But even then, you'd still be complaining that, oh, well, I have to level up to earn currency. Why can't I just, you know, get currency just by playing a match? You know, why do I have to actually play the game to earn things? It's like, people would still complain because no one's ever satisfied. It's like that story when I was younger. Um, I'm only 19, so this, probably, this might not be... This might be an older book for some people, or it might not be even something they know, depending on who sees this video. But it's like that book, the um, if you give a mouse a cookie. I mean, if you give a fan base one good thing, they're not going to be happy about it, and they're going to want more and more and more, and no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to satisfy them. Look at Call of Duty. It went from a World War II shooter... And people would end up complaining, oh, well, it's too much World War II, we need more, you know, innovation. So they went to COD 4, and then after that, they kept going, and it was really good for the franchise. And then everyone was complaining, oh, well, it's, you know, it's just really slow-paced. It's, uh, it's too much for me, you know, or not too much for me. It's, uh, you know, not enough innovation, it's very bland. So Sledgehammer innovates, and the fan base explodes with complaints. They do something completely different for the franchise, and... Everyone in the community finds a reason to bitch. And they repeat the same thing for three years. Um, Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, Infinite Warfare. Those three games, all advanced movement, and everyone bitches about them. Yeah, the game is very in quality. But the fact that they listened to the community and still got bitched at, and still got told, oh, well, you know, it's a shit game, you know, this isn't Call of Duty. What do you want them to do? I mean, you ask for innovation and change, and they innovate and change, and you complain. It's like, oh, well, you know, everyone else says innovation's good, so I'll say I want innovation. But then someone innovates or changes, and you get pissed off, and you sit here crying, oh, well, this isn't my Call of Duty. You wanted it to change. You told the developers and you told Activision, hey, I want this to happen. I want... Call of Duty to not feel like the exact same game every year. And then they change it and you guys all complain. Everyone. I've even been I've even been guilty about overly complaining about COD at some points. Like even when I was younger. I I admit that. And I admit that's my own fault. And I mean it's just one of those things where you could sit there and say, Oh yeah, well, you know, change isn't good. Well, it's like, yeah, change is a good thing, and you're sitting here bitching about it, but instead of that little tangent, like I said, loot boxes are not inherently evil. Honestly, I'd say Overwatch handles it better than 99% of other games. Even better than other Activision things, like, um, what was it, Destiny 2, um, the Call of Duty series, actually Infinite Warfare, even though that game I didn't enjoy it as much, I mean, I'm not going to say it's the worst cut ever, because it's easily not, um... But, I mean, the supply drops in that game were good, for the most part. I mean, COD 4, the remaster, or whatever, even though it shouldn't have had supply drops. But the fact that it did and the way it went about it, of where it was actually pretty easy to unlock what you actually wanted, that was good. You got rewarded for playing the game, and World War II, for the most part, is doing pretty okay on it. I mean, 
in terms of the drop rates, I mean, they're adding what, weapon charms now, um, camos, emblems, um, calling cards, um, what else? They're adding weapon variants, helmets, outfits, all this other shit that just doesn't need to be there. Pistol grips were a thing. I mean, shit. And then they replaced those with weapon charms, which are just equally as useless. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. Literally, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. And, again, this goes back to the whole point of the other video. No one's fully defend... Well, I'm not saying you're going to say no one. But most people aren't going to sit here and just blindly defend things that are blatantly wrong. And if a majority of people are sitting here seeing, sitting down objectively and saying, oh, well, yeah, you know, the loot boxes in Overwatch aren't that bad. I mean, it's cosmetic only. You get skins, voice lines, sprays, emotes, victory poses, highlight intros. What's the harm in that? What's the harm in that? Literally, the only expensive thing to get is skins. And that's only a thousand credits, and that's really not that hard to earn as long as you play the game. Even Overwatch will remain to have aspects of it that are anti-consumer. And as long as developer Blizzard continues to add and remove content that significantly adds value and replayability to the product, then Overwatch... Again. It, I mean, again, it could be, I guess, a subjective thing. But for me personally, the PvE doesn't add that much replayability. There's no variables to it. With the PvP, it's, oh, you have these set enemies, you have these set things, and you can kill them. And then they add, oh, well, you can play it with any hero. That doesn't add replay value. I'm sorry. Being able to go through Retribution as D.Va instead of just playing 3 DPS and a healer, that's not, that's not replay value. That's really not... When there's only a few characters out of the all heroes mode, when there's when there's characters in the all heroes mode that are completely pretty much useless in Retribution, what's the point of playing them? I mean, Sombra in Uprising is completely fucking useless. She doesn't do anything. I mean, yeah, you can hack a Bastion, but that's all you can do. She has literally pretty much no use in Uprising. Or no, she has no re use in uh, Retribution. Because even if she hacks the people, sorry, I got the two mixed up. But even in Re or Uprising, the all heroes, there's heroes that just do nothing. Zarya in both modes is completely useless, and she's I've gotten I think 20 hours almost on her, or like 15 or something like that out of my 40 hours of playtime. So I mean, she, one of my favorite heroes is fucking useless, and I mean, Farah, yeah. Cool, she can do a bunch of damage to one of the tanks. That's it. Um, I mean, <laughs> Lucio, what can he do? He can provide a uh, ult or whatever. I'm sure he's useful on like Legendary or something like that. Like I'm sure he's a good pick there. Symmetra, shield gen at the end of it. That's all she's useful for. I mean, yeah, she's getting that rework so that might change. But I mean, there's a lot of heroes that are just completely useless in these PvE modes, so just because the PvE modes are there doesn't mean that, oh yeah, well since we have more content, it's instantly a better game, or it's instantly more replayable. The PvE content gets stale within like an hour. I literally played that first stream or whatever of me playing Uprising and Retribution for the first times, and I got bored of it right after that stream and barely played it afterwards because I was just bored. I mean, <laughs> I'd rather play competitive because at least in the PvP there's variables. Like, oh, I could go up against this style of comp, I can go up against these separate heroes, I can go up against a wacky comp, I can go into no limits and go against a whole team of one hero or a whole team of two heroes or something like that. There's no variable in PvE. Especially just the standard one that's, oh, run through here. I mean, in Retribution you have two objectives. Blow open a door, sur survive till the door opens, go through enemies, survive till another thing happens. And then you're done. It's literally just stay alive, kill, leave. That's There's no interesting things to it. Yeah, Uprising wasn't that great either. I mean, it had, what, three objectives? It had to hack the terminals, which are terminals, if I could fucking speak. 
um, you have to hack the terminals or whatever, where you have to stand near three different terminals to kind of take down anti-aircraft guns so that a payload can be delivered. Um, and by then, you usually have everyone use the ult at least twice, give or take, depending on who, excuse me, depending on who they're playing. But, I mean, aside from that, it's literally do that, go to a payload, defend that till it starts, escort the payload, stop it from taking too much damage, let it explode, kill three enemies, and then you're done. Yeah, you know, there's a bit more variety, and there's a bit more time for interesting things to happen, but it's, it's, the PB in this game, just it's not that great. And again, that could be a subjective thing, but when it's literally just a repeat of the exact same objectives with no variables on the enemies, it's easy. It's, it's not hard. Especially, I mean, the only gameplay I've seen of this guy is this video, and then the first video I reacted to of his. But the only gameplay I see him do is on easy mode. For these events. He doesn't try them on normal or hard or expert. He just plays them on the easiest one for the sake of recording. He doesn't just have background footage and then edit. He doesn't do things like that. I mean, if you're sitting here saying, oh yeah, well, PvE is great and you're just playing it the easiest way possible, I honestly, I don't think you're the person to be criticizing PvP. I mean, shit. Overwatch will continue to have parts of it that are anti-consumer. Is Overwatch anti-consumer as a whole? No, but it does have some pretty big factors that are indeed anti-consumer. So, in the end, Sam, for the most part, I like your comment, I appreciate your comment, you genuinely came up with some good counterpoints, for the most part, I honestly believe you were one of the best comments criticizing my video. However, once again, I must assure you, I did not create my original Overwatch video to just intentionally create drama for clicks, and I'm not over-exaggerating the problems of the game. Overwatch is not a perfect game. It has flaws. It has issues that a lot of people ignore or won't speak up on because of the fanatical fanboy portion of the Overwatch community. Look. Okay, so saying that people aren't criticizing the same things as you and calling those people fanboys is highly, highly idiotic of you. Just because someone doesn't have the exact same opinion as you doesn't mean they're a fan. I mean, I don't agree with you, does that make me a fanboy of Overwatch, even though I've critiqued the game many times? I mean, I've released one rant, and I have two more recorded, I'm going to be uploading them soon. So, I mean, as someone who constantly complains about issues between competitive and quick play, and just balancing in general a fanboy, as someone that has made multiple videos criticizing the game, and criticized it on stream multiple times, is that kind of person a fanboy? If they don't speak up against loot boxes and against the fact that there's no constant PvE, I mean, you're just saying general statements of, oh, well, if people don't have the same opinion as me, then it's fanboys. I mean, honestly, I think out of all the issues that Overwatch has, saying, oh, well, the PvE is not always there, that's not the biggest one to focus on. And that's not me saying, oh, well, yeah, any issues the game has kind of, you know, say, oh, well, this is a bigger one, so ignore the other one. I'm not saying that, but prioritize the actual issues the game has. These are the kind of videos you make, and I, I'll even do a quick uh, Google search to kind of show you guys, because I grabbed his thumbnail for the thumbnail of this video, Grammar Trend Show Overwatch, and you guys will see the, uh, why is the, the Overwatch community full of pussies? Overwatch fans can't take criticism, they're like overhyped. I mean, you are someone that has actively bashed Overwatch as a game, and you've bashed the community repeatedly, and you're the one sitting here saying the community is fanboys. Your issue isn't with the game. Your issue is with the fact that it has a fan base. Your issue is with all this other stuff, instead of the actual things that matter. Yes, the fan base is a part of it. The fan base is part of anything that the fan base is a fan of. But, I mean, shit, you're sitting here complaining about, oh yeah, well, fanboys, 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 using these buzzwords, without giving examples yourself of, oh yeah, well, these are fanboys, or actually describing it. From what I can tell, your definition of fanboys is, oh, well, yeah, they have a different opinion than me, and they actually like the PvP, and they don't see 
the same issues I do with the game, so therefore they're fanboys. That is not how that works. That is that is fucking ludicrous to me that someone actually thinks that. Look, I absolutely understand loving a video game, being passionate about a video game. But no video game is flawless, no video game is perfect. Every video game can be improved and be better. Even my, my personal favorite video game of all time, Doom, Doom 2016, it could be a better game. I love the game to pieces, but it could be better. It could be improved upon. It has flaws, it has issues, doesn't stop it from being my favorite video game, but every video game has issues, has flaws that can be touched on and improved upon and fixed. And when it comes to Activision Blizzard, they are willfully ignoring the issues and problems of their game because they have so much positive PR, they have such a loyal fan base, they see no reason. Okay, if they're ignoring their fan base, why are they buffing and nerfing and retweaking heroes pretty much on a weekly or bi-weekly basis? I mean, two weeks ago, or just about two weeks ago, or a week and a half ago, they released the Hanzo rework and then a couple other buffs and nerfs. Um, and then just, I think, yesterday, they released the um, another patch, which, as far as I know, the only thing I know about that patch is that they... Um, buffed Ana to where she can shoot through um, fully health enemies or fully health teammates like teammates at full health to heal teammates either in front of that person or um, deal damage to enemies behind them. I mean yeah the rate at which they do it isn't that great like there's still characters that actually need reworks and there were characters that were fine that they need more powerful for no reason but at the most part they're not doing that bad at balancing the game and all that they're paying attention to make the game better. Activision Blizzard seems to be so hyper-focused on competitive and esports that the people that Blizzard originally catered to, their original fan base who just played their games to have fun, while they've made small gestures and attempts towards them, I think it's fair to say that they've been somewhat slacking in that regard. And now, it's time what you've all been waiting for. What, the video to actually get good? For you to actually have some points that weren't just bitching about loot boxes or the fact that PvE isn't always in the game. I mean, you're prioritizing literally two things, and then calling pretty much anyone else that doesn't share that opinion with you a fanboy. Um, I mean, I highly doubt that's actually going to happen, but I guess we'll find out. The stupid comments. The oh, okay. The irrational non-arguments. Oh boy, we got a lot to go through. Let's get started. PVE cuck 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 cuck. What? You dimwit? Fallacy if I've ever seen one. Yeah, you're not being ignorant, arrogant, or closed-minded at all. Um, on the terms of yeah, that comment. I mean, not really a comment that needed to be said. I mean, it's YouTube. You gotta expect those kind of comments. Just how the internet works. Um, but I mean. As far as the ignorance and all that, and arrogance, you're literally sitting here saying that a game is unfinished or worse than other games, or an anti-consumer game, just because it doesn't have PvP or PvE fully in the game all the time. That's, that's one of your main points that's pretty much always against this game, is that, oh yeah, well, everyone that doesn't have the, opinion of, the same opinion as me, they're a fanboy. And, oh, well, you know, people actually like this game. They're clearly fanboys, because you can't like things unless you're a fanboy. Either you hate something or you're a fanboy. There's no in-between. So, I mean, as far as the ignorance and arrogance, you, sir, are a shining example of such. Such a dumbbell. Activision has nothing to do with Overwatch. Laugh my ass off. Overwatch, if you want PvE, it's a PvP game made for PvP. If it's a PvP game made for PvP, then why is Blizzard even bothering with PvE? Why even make these PvP? Okay, um, I, I'm just going to kind of chuckle at this because it's kind of the fact that, I mean, they're branching out trying different stuff. I mean, if they didn't have PvE, you'd still complain of, oh yeah, well this game doesn't have PvE and I only like PvE games. So if they don't have PvE, then the game's shit. I mean, you could be bitching. It, it, I mean, he's not wrong. It's a game, I mean, he's wrong about the fact of, oh, don't play it if you want PvE. That's, I don't that's a stupid, and also that no one cares about it. That's, again, wrong. The first two points of his comment are wrong. For the most part. 
I mean, yeah, there's some people that don't care about PvE, but certainly no one does. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, telling someone what to play or not to play is a bit ridiculous. Um, I mean, yeah, I said it in my first video. If your main focus is PvE, then Overwatch probably isn't the game for you. I mean, if it doesn't always have the mode you like, then uh, it, it might not be the game for you to play. Yeah, you can still criticize it. And I think I even touched on that in my first video of, yeah, I'm not going to say that, oh, well, since I don't care as much for the PvE, I don't think it should be in there, because I think it should. For the people that want to play it, I don't see the harm in it always being there. I see no issue with that. That's fine. The more people that play the game, I have no issue with that. That's a good thing. But it's a PvP game made for PvP. That's mostly correct. I mean, when they released the game, it had no PvE. At all. I mean, yeah, I might have had it in the custom games. But there was no Junkenstein, there was no any of that. And the game blew up. And it blew up even more when comp the competitive season started, the first one. I mean, the game got popular off of the PvP. Its main focus is that PvP. It's not going to focus on, oh yeah, well, even though 99% of our player base is in the PvP, let's just go to PvE because that's a lot easier. That's not their main focus, and it never really will be. Even during the events, it's not going to be their main thing. Because during this past event, they had competitive elimination in the arcade, which is PvP. Their main focus is going to be on PvP and balancing that. They're not going to balance heroes for PvE. There's no need for that. That's that's not where their main focus is. That's not where the main draw of the game is. PvE game modes. Why even have any form of AI bots at all? Blizzard has clearly shown that they're completely capable of implementing PvE into the game. They have shown that they are completely capable of adding in AI. It is not just a PvP game made for PvP, obviously, else they wouldn't have bothered with any forms of PvE whatsoever. Also okay, saying that, oh, you know, well, if, it wasn't, if it's made for X, then why bother with Y? That's an ignorant statement. I mean, it's literally very easily explained, and if you use this thing called a brain, you can realize that, oh yeah, some part of it might have been for the fact of money, because they realized that, yeah, PvP would help out. And another part of it could have just been the fact of, oh hey, well yeah, let's try out PvP, and if it works, that's great. I mean, they've done PvE in the past, so why not bring it in as an option in Overwatch? But that's... That's never going to be their main focus for Overwatch. Their goal isn't for Overwatch to be some hero PvE shooter. That's not their goal. They're not battle point. Their main focus isn't this single player, or this co-op campaign where you just rush through and play as whoever you want just to go through a campaign. That's not their focus. That's that's not where the focus of Overwatch is ever going to be. It's a hero team-based shooter. You can't have a team-based hero shooter with PvE because the enemy team. They're bots. It, it, that, that doesn't affect anything. That doesn't affect the fact of, oh, well, yeah, well, we built this whole system for 6v6. You know, they have 4v4, 3v3, and then 1v1s. I mean, if they're made, if 99% of their focus is PvP, why are you sitting here bitching about the fact of, oh, yeah, well, yeah, it's totally not, you know, a PvP game. It is. Literally, all you have to do is look at the game and you can tell that. It's basic fucking logic. Also, why are you lying? No one cares about PvE? That's clearly not true. Just look at my video. It has far more likes than dislikes. And I made a video well over a year ago, almost two years ago, about how I was disappointed that Overwatch doesn't have a single-player campaign. And the vast majority agreed that they'd want a single-player campaign in Overwatch. Okay, just because someone says that, oh yeah, it would be nice. Cause like, I, I'm not going to take the time to fucking look through his comments and see exactly which ones he's using. Because he doesn't show any examples, so why the fuck am I going to sit here and take 20 minutes, half hour, an hour, looking at whatever video he's talking about, to look through the comment section and see which ones he'd probably choose. I mean, shit. But I mean, if he's sitting here saying, oh yeah, well, you know... A lot of people want an Overwatch campaign. He's probably taking comments that were in the middle of, oh yeah, well, it would be nice if it had one, but, you know, it's not needed. Or even just the comments of, oh yeah, an Overwatch campaign would be nice. I mean, I've even said multiple times, yeah, if they could do it well, it would be good to have it. It would be great. But a single-player campaign doesn't make or break a game. 
a single player campaign done shittily, that doesn't help the game out at all. That just makes the game worse. That drags the game down, it drags the name down, all of that. If you have an amazing multiplayer and a shitty campaign, that is, people are going to focus on the negatives instead of the positives because that's just how human mentality works. So, I mean, yeah, they've even said, yeah, they consider doing an, um, a campaign and stuff like that. But that's not their main focus because that's not what their goal for Overwatch is. I mean, if you're going to sit here and complain about, oh, yeah, well, the devs don't want to put in a single-player campaign and the fans want it and they're just ignoring that for their own vision, then fuck off. I mean, shit, if you're going to sit here and limit someone else's creative vision just because, oh, well, it's not what I want, then fuck off. I mean, if their creative vision is to have a multiplayer mainly focused game and then kind of go off of that and balance that, and you're going to sit here and say, oh, well, it doesn't have a campaign, so I don't like it. And if you're going to sit here and try and be like, oh, yeah, well, they should really do it. If not, they're ignoring their fans. If you're sitting there trying to give the developer shit and trying to make the, the developers look bad for not including a single-player mode, when that's not their creative vision, at least at the moment, then you are not the person to be critiquing things. I mean, hell, I'm a fucking producer, a music producer, and you a fucking YouTube gamer. And even though I don't like the music of, say, like, um, Waka Flocka or Camela Cabello or stuff like that, even though I might not like their songs, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, yeah, well, they're shitty, their music's trash, you know, it's awful, they should really make this kind of music. Because you don't try and sit here and say, oh, yeah, well, your creative vision is wrong, do what I want, and that's the right way to do it. Creativity is just that. It's creative. It's from person to person. Creativity is the most subjective thing in the world. Literally. If you want to sit here and try and limit someone's creativity just because it's they're not doing exactly what you want and they have a different vision than you, then you should not be critiquing things. You should not be at least critiquing things at that level. You should not be sitting here having most of your videos being critiques on a game, most of your videos on a game being critiquing it for the fact that, oh yeah, well, their creative vision is different than mine. That is a point that 99% of people with a right mind would just say, hey, that's really not a point. It's like, hey, they have a different opinion than me. See, that's terrible. They're awful. I mean, shit, you don't fuck... That's just ludicrously naive. Watch, so people obviously do care about PVE. I don't understand why you're lying. Facts, evidence, proof is right in front of you, and instead you choose to lie. Um, should I, should I even touch on this at this point? I mean, this dude's sitting here complaining about not checking facts. You made a whole probably about three minute segment on you can't level up quick in Overwatch, you can't do this, you can't do that, saying absolutes. When a quick Google search, as you, you've said, um, I mean, you've said that literally in this video, all you had to do was a quick Google search or a YouTube search, and boom, over 200,000 results. I mean, it's really not that hard. It's one of the easiest things to do, and you yourself are being hypocritical to your own statements for the fact of your own argument. And I saved the best one for last. Oh boy, isn't that I um I don't even know what to say to this, honestly. Um I mean of course he didn't include my comment in here, he only included one positive one and then like three or four negative ones, because that's just a lot easier than including criticism. But I mean that's what people do in these kind of videos. I mean he's sitting here hold on. Sorry, my fucking sister's screaming. But, um... I mean, this this kind of comment... Again, he's fucking cherry-picking. People that do these kind of critiques, they always choose the best ones to make their channel look the best. Um, I know that may look hypocritical for my channel, because some of my videos have... Um, 
comments to where I have to enable them. But I have that for the fact that I literally mass approve comments. I mean, I don't get many comments, but the comments that are actually, you know, have a reason to be there, not just the, oh, fuck off, kill yourself, or oh, X or Y. I mean, comments like that, I just get rid of because there's no need to have general toxicity. Yeah, if someone has a different opinion than me and they give me reasons, I'll keep that in there. That's fine. But general comments like someone telling me to kill myself, I'm not going to keep them in comments because it doesn't need to be there. I mean, yeah, it might be some people might see, oh, yeah, well, you're trying to dictate your comments. I really don't. I use it to filter out the toxic comments that have no need to be there. Like comments like this, there's, there's no reason for comments like that to exist. But, um, yeah, it's... <sighs> um, but, yeah. But yeah, it's it's just again that's the whole kind of subject on that. But I mean, it's just it's the fact that he's choosing. Sorry, it's really loud in this house right now. I didn't have time to record this video beforehand because. Okay, well, um, but yeah, I mean, he's choosing comments like this over one positive comment. He choose, he has four or five different examples of negative comments and extremes at that, and he only includes one positive comment. I mean, this dude is, it's, I mean, people do this all the time. It's nothing new on YouTube. People always do this. People always choose one good example of one or two. Sorry, my sister won't stop yelling. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. All right, hold on. All right, that's a bit better. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but yeah. I mean, it's it's nothing unusual for you two. I mean, people always choose a bunch of negative ones and then one or two positive ones to seem like they're not having a bias, but they do. Everyone has a bias these days. It's fucking ridiculous, but I guess moving on to the next point. One a beauty. What a perfect representation of Overwatch fanboys. The Again, I, I got in the whole argument on someone about, or on Twitter, on Twitter with someone about a whole situation of not all, which if you guys check my Twitter, that's why I have hashtag not all in my um, name or whatever, but I mean, not every Overwatch fanboy is exactly like this. I mean, not every, anyone, not every fanboy of anything is toxic. Yeah, there could be a large portion, a small portion, a normal portion, whatever but not every single person that's a fanboy of Overwatch is this toxic. Yeah, fanboys in general are not a great thing. Fans in general are a good thing. But having fanboys or fangirls is highly unhealthy. I, I don't see it as a good thing. Um, I might touch on that in another video. I don't actually know, but I'm not going to have this video be like an hour and a half, two hours long just going into that. But, I mean, again... Stop choosing people. This is this isn't even just a you Gamertron. This is to YouTubers in general. Stop choosing fucking comments like this in pretty much any video critiquing yourself. Merc Music did this in a video probably about a month or two back um, about how he chose like I think two or three, or maybe four comments that kind of stroked his ego, being like, "Oh yeah, amazing channel, you know, keep up the good work." And then he chose a bunch of comments that were completely toxic, and that was about it. And he called it a video. 
I mean, he didn't choose any comments with nuance, as far as I remember. I mean, I might rewatch the video, and that might not be true. But 99% of the comments he chose that weren't inherently stroking his ego were just overly toxic nonsense. And YouTubers do this all the time, and they think that it's just fine to get away with because their audience has led them. I mean, this video has almost 400 likes and only about 50 dislikes. And he's saying shit like this, and he's still getting decent likes. I mean, I'd kill for fucking engagement ratio like this. This would be fucking great. <laughs> but, I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's just, that's a terrible habit that is now apparently a thing that's fine on YouTube. But it's not. It's a shitty thing to do. It makes you look like you only take, you only take positive criticism and you ignore anything that isn't inherently saying you're right. That is an awful kind of mindset to have. The most unoriginal and cliched comment I've ever seen. If you Man, it's almost like, you know, just lumping, uh, sorry, my dad's wee whacking outside. But it's almost like lumping anyone that disagrees with you in the category of fanboy is kind of, uh, unoriginal and, uh, you know, kind of sad. But, uh, I mean, <laughs> who am I to point out the logic or the illogical nature of your statements? I mean... Clearly, you don't really focus on consistency. I mean, I don't blame you. YouTube and people being consistent with their opinions isn't really usually a thing. Um, but I mean, this is just this is just ridiculous. Two videos, possibly more of you just being inconsistent, and you have fifty thousand subscribers. A channel of your size should not be spewing this kind of bullshit. Like, that's fucking ridiculous. If you want to make yourself look pathetic, well done, you retarded faggot. I know. Um. What what year is it? Oh yeah, it's 2018. Why are we still using retard and faggot as insults? <laughs> like, I guarantee you, if a bigger channel than him said this shit, he fucking YouTube, fucking YouTube itself and media outlets would flip shit. And be like, oh, well, he said retard and faggot in a sentence. You know, he's clearly a bigoted asshole. But, I mean, he's at 50,000 fucking subs. And he's saying this shit and he's getting likes out of it. I mean, you're sitting here trying to insult someone for having a different opinion. And calling them a retarded faggot. I mean, I'm bisexual. So, I mean, for me, someone calling me a faggot it doesn't really mean much. <laughs> I mean, I've been called pretty much everything in the book through middle school and high school, because that's just how people are. It's just how teenagers are. It's whatever. It doesn't excuse it, but it's how it is. But I mean, you're sitting here trying to insult someone by calling them insults a 12 year old could think of, and what a 10 year old would think was actually creative. And I mean, I don't know how old you are, but I'm assuming you're over 12 or 13. I mean, you at least sound like you're about my age. So I mean, it's, it's a bit worrying. I want to quickly address some of the most reused and nonsensical comments made repeated over and over again on my original Overwatch video. Uprising and retribution are an event. You don't understand what an event means. So you're using terminology and semantics to justify having content removed from your game? Event is just a title. Calling a piece of content an event in a video game doesn't justify removing it. Again, it's just terminology, it's semantics. Please, don't be so closed-minded. If they left these game modes in the game permanently, they would get boring. Okay, two points. One, being closed-minded, you have been closed-minded in this video and the other one, and probably many others. I mean, calling Overwatch uh, the Overwatch fan base pussies and saying they can't take criticism. I mean, if anyone's closed minded, it's you. Anyone that doesn't agree with you, you call a fanboy or you call them a fucking pussy. I mean, you're literally insulting people with different opinions. Wait, so if you get bored of a piece of content or game mode, the developer should just remove it from. Also, second point, um, which is kind of like two points in one, um, so it's like a second and third point, I guess, but um, first part of it, yeah, the PvE gets boring after a while for most people. I mean, at least for me. I mean, from other people that I've talked to, other friends I've met through Overwatch, most of them say it's really just, it's not enjoyable after a long period of time. I mean, I got bored of it after an hour, and I'm someone that plays many different kinds of games, and... 
I got bored of it after an hour. I mean, yeah, that may be just me, and you know, that's not me immediately saying shit. But again, third point, or I guess kind of before I move on to the third point, what's boring or entertaining is in some ways subjective. Some people like Overwatch, and some people find it entertaining. I mean, one of my friends that I play Fortnite with, he doesn't find Overwatch enjoyable, and that's fine. Not everyone has to enjoy every game. Not everyone has to enjoy the exact same games as me or you or Mary Sue. But trying to call them pussies or something like that because they don't agree with you is fucking ludicrous. And third point, no, content shouldn't be taken out just because it's boring. And yeah, I'm sure there are people that have used that argument. Saying, oh yeah, so, I mean, with how you're wording it, it might have actually happened. I don't know. I mean, you don't provide a comment to kind of show proof. You're just saying, oh yeah, well, I got these comments, so therefore you got to trust me on it. Again, show examples. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's um, it's just fucking ludicrous at this point, hypocrisy in this video. I mean, your fucking name should be The Hypocrite Show. Like, honestly, it's... it's I know that's an unoriginal diss, but fuck off. <laughs> I mean, my fucking name, my YouTube name was based off of fucking churches. I mean, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, again, just don't, again, you're closed-minded, so calling other people closed-minded is a bit kind of hypocritical. Just, just a lot. Um, but yeah, no. No content should be removed from the game unless it hurts the game and is actually bad. From the game? No! Do you even think about what you're writing before you post a comment? Do you even think about the videos that you make before you post them? I mean, there's been a couple videos I've recorded and just not posted because I've been like, these are shit. <laughs> I mean, I've had to record, I've had to re-record videos probably about two or three times for certain videos just because I wasn't pleased and I would record for like a half hour and not be happy with how it turned out, so I had to re-record just because I wasn't happy with how it turned out. I mean, there's songs I still haven't finished after months because I'm not 100% happy with how they're turning out because I keep getting more and more pretentious about my kind of quality in terms of music. So, again, just this video is a freaking wreck. <laughs> I know it's the YouTube comment section, ridiculous question, but seriously, where is the logic in that statement? Oh, I got bored of this piece of content. I got bored of this game mode in a video game. Therefore, the developers should remove it entirely and no one else should be able to play it because I personally got bored of it. Therefore, no one else should be able to play it. Jesus Christ. I actually had comments in the comment section saying I was being entitled for wanting to keep the content in the game, for wanting to keep Retribution and Uprising and these game modes in Overwatch. People were calling me entitled. No, this is entitled. Just because you were bored of a piece of content or a game mode doesn't mean everybody else should be prohibited from experiencing the content. That's true entitlement. That's true selfishness. There's nothing entitled, there's nothing selfish about wanting a game mode or a piece of content a video game to stay in the game so everyone can enjoy it and play it. Um, okay, so for I accidentally unmuted it, then muted it, then unmuted it again. Um, didn't mean to mute it, <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, it's honestly hurting my brain just doing these fucking videos, but I mean, you're sitting here calling someone else entitled, hold on. Okay, um, but I mean, you're sitting here calling someone else entitled for one the content removed with yeah it's a bit ridiculous but you're sitting here saying and bitching that oh yeah well it has to have this content in there it has to have a single player campaign it has to have pve and you're calling the game worse for not having those things like i said a campaign doesn't inherently make the game good neither does pve just existing good content makes things good content doesn't just equal good that's not how that works it whenever they want. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Overwatch was always advertised as a PvP game. No. Wrong. St um, it always was. Um, also I love how I paused on that little smear frame of the animation. Love it. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it, I mean, hate to break it to you, man. I don't know if you really looked at any of the promotional material. It's a PvP game through and through. They didn't advertise anything for PvE for this game except for the events. 
literally when the games came out, they didn't do, oh yeah, well this game has PvE, because it didn't. I mean, yeah. It was marketed as a PvP team-based hero shooter. I mean, if it's called a team-based hero shooter where you gotta strategize and shit, that doesn't mean, oh hey, yeah, it'll be one team against a bunch of bots. That's, that doesn't require strategy. Like, I'm sorry, that, that doesn't. Stop lying, please. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, about the Overwatch animated short trailer. Um, there was more marketing than just the animated shorts. You know that, right? There were trailers, character reveals, stuff like that, and you're only counting the animated shorts. Um, yeah, in a sense, the animated shorts are advertising. Okay, that's just how it is. Anything that shows off the game is essentially just advertising in a sense, at least in some kind of capacity. But sitting here is going to the animated shorts is the sole purpose of marketing. I just, I can't even with the fucking idiocy right now, man. Trailer advertisements that suggest that the game is PvP only. As a matter of fact, it advertises the exact opposite. It creates the impression that the game has some sort of story campaign, that it has some sort of PvE. With its comic books, with its character origins videos, Blizzard keeps advertising that there is some sort of story in Overwatch. And Just indicating that a game has a story behind it. Every game has a story behind it. Fortnite has a story behind it, and no one really gives a shit about it, for the most part, at least from what I can tell. So, s saying that just because it has a story in the cinematic trailers and the shorts, I mean, yeah, what are they going to do in the shorts? Just play through a normal match? And then call it, oh yeah, well, you know, it's just a normal match, but animated. As if it was like a CG movie. Yeah, that's that's worth our time. You're fucking, dude, that's, no. <laughs> Why would they waste that time and money on doing something like that? Yeah, they're going to present a story, a mini arc, or something. And especially in the comics. They're not going to make comics of just random matches and call that a thing. They're going to showcase stories and things like that. They're not going to just say, oh yeah, well, yeah, uh, you know, we're just going to throw in uh, comics showing uh, just normal matches, you know, just normal 6v6s or 3v3s, call it a day. They're not going to do that. That would make literally no sense for them to do that. And yet all this cinematic and story material, all these advertisements that are promoting the game, that are trying to make you to buy the game, actually have nothing to do with the game because apparently the game is non-canon. So all of the ads for the game are canon, but the game itself isn't canon in terms Um, that's not true. Literally, the event you're showcasing in the background and the one you showcased earlier in the video are both canon. They're both actually events that happened in the story. Why are, why are you, in your own words, stop lying? You're literally he sitting here misleading the audience of your video, <laughs> saying basically that, oh yeah, well, you know, the trailers and the adverts, the cinematic shorts aren't strictly adverts. They don't make them for the purpose of, yeah, we'll make shorts just to advertise the game. That's not the sole purpose of them. They make adverts to advertise. That's literally the sole purpose of an advert. The sole purpose of a, a fucking animated short isn't to say, oh yeah, well, we made an animated short by our game. I mean, that's just, that's fucking stupid. I mean, you're sitting here calling something non-canonical when the events you've been playing through and showing are fucking canonical. I mean, I, I, honestly... You are one of the biggest hypocrites on YouTube right now. It's I don't even know how you have the fucking channel size that you do. In terms of the story of Overwatch, what? Blizzard is absolutely, positively advertising that there is some sort of story in Overwatch. But there isn't, so why bother with all this lore? Lore that is... There is... I mean, literally, you just brought up lore. There is a story in Overwatch. And yeah, it might not consistently be there, but even through some maps, you can see the story things. I mean, on Dorado, not Dorado, on, um, what's that fucking Castillo or something like that, where you, it's like the, um, like 1v1 or 3v3 kind of map. Um, you go there and you get to see Sambra's, or Sambra's, Sombra's, like, setup or whatever, like the computer's 
her computers. I can't speak today. Her computers, her monitors, all that kind of shit. And that's not canonical. Really? I mean, Numbani, the origins of Arissa, and then part of Doomfist's origins. Both in the same place. And you're sitting here saying, oh, well, it's not canonical. What? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the matches themselves might not be canonical, but I mean... What? I mean, I just, I don't understand that kind of logic right now. I really don't. ...isn't even in the game, it's outside of the game. Look, I wouldn't be criticizing Overwatch's story and lore and characters if it didn't keep promoting and advertising them. If Overwatch truly just wanted to be a PvP-only game, then advertise the PvP. Focus on and advertise the PvP gameplay. But that... I mean, that is what they're focusing on as far as when they actually release actual adverts. I mean, they don't release adverts of the PvE unless it's an event. I mean, they're not going to advertise something that isn't in the game. So what, what are they advertising then? I mean, they're not sitting here saying that PvP is a thing. Just because, oh, they did an animated short, that means that PvE has to be a thing. That's not how that works. That that makes no sense. I mean, I, my brain is just honestly fucking hurting at this point from this fucking just the amount of shit you are vomiting out from your mouth is ridiculous. That's not what Blizzard is doing. <sighs> and that's it. That's all. Before I wrap up this video, I want to clearly state because apparently it wasn't clear enough in the previous video, even though I stated twice, once at the beginning and once at the end of the previous Overwatch video, I don't hate Overwatch. I like Overwatch. Overwatch is a good game. It's a fun. If you thought Overwatch was a good game, why is pretty much 99% of the videos you make on it trash talking the game, trash talking the community? Calling people pussies, saying people can't take criticism. If anyone, as far as the examples I've seen, can't take criticism, it's you. People like you that sit here and call out the, Oh, well, someone told me to kill myself, so clearly they're a retarded faggot. You know, I'm the one that's the victim. It's the fucking internet. People aren't always going to agree with your opinion. Even in real life, people aren't always going to agree with your opinion. Grow the fuck up. <laughs> You're sitting here complaining of, oh, well, people don't agree with me, so they're pussies or fanboys. Grow up. You're in such a tiny little thought bubble and your little echo chamber that you can't even consider someone else's opinion just because, oh, well, that would make it seem like I'm actually an intelligent person or I actually take time to make my videos. You literally sit here, press record, and just let your brain shit out things that you think. And then if people disagree with you, they're fanboys or pussies fun game. I'm not, and I'm quoting here, shitting on Overwatch. I'm providing criticism. I'm criticizing a video game that I like and enjoy in the hope and possibility that it gets even better and becomes an even better game. I don't understand why this is such a difficult concept to grasp. That is the end of it, though. This has been in the defense of Overwatch, criticisms and rebuttal, or rebuttal and criticisms. This has been a video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did indeed like the video in any way, shape, or form, please be sure to hit the like button and like button up so you Oops. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, another shit video from Gamertron. Nothing new at this point. Um, if you guys come to this video from looking up Gamertron's video, uh, hello, I'm Instant Hertrex, you can call me Seth. Uh, I do music content, gaming content, fucking self-plug. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, aside from that, me plugging my channel. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing responses again for the most part. I mean, I might just do them when it really pops up to me. Um, but, I mean, if you guys enjoyed, uh, leave a like, a comment, and even subscribe. I'm doing a giveaway um, for some Merg Energy. So if you guys want to do that, check them out. Um, if you guys just want to buy some Merg Energy, use my discount code. That will be in the description. Um, but, yeah. So... Uh, I will see you guys in the comments. Even if you agree or disagree, feel free to let me know. I will gladly have a discussion with anyone, whether they agree or not. And I'll, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, peace out.